Unfortunately, academia has had very little interest in dating these hilltop sites featuring standing stones, so we don't know exactly how old they are or who put them there. Was it the Celts from some post-Atlantean civilization? Or could it have been the descendants of the famous navigator and discoverer of New Zealand, Maui? As most school children know from the myths and legends, Maui ensnared the sun. This legend is a direct reference to Maui's knowledge of navigation and celestial observations. So what else do we know about Maui? Maui was basically the person who navigated the Pacific, probably navigated the world. Okay, if you go back to all the Pacific Islands history, what's the history of your islands? Maui fished it up. You come to New Zealand, the North Island, the great fish of, of Maui. You know, the South Island is, is canoe. The North Island is said to resemble a stingray, with the mouth of the ray at Palliser Bay. During Maui's circumnavigation of the South Island, and upon reaching Kaikoura, he spotted the mountains of the North Island and sailed across the straits to Palliser Bay, where he was greeted by the red-haired chieftainess of Orokoroko. If Maui first arrived in the South Island, where did he land? According to Waitaha and Naitahu oral history, Maui came from the Southern Ocean and landed at Bruce Bay. Well, I'm standing here now at Bruce Bay and about 100 kilometers due east of me rises the highest mountain in South Island, known as Auraki or Mount Cook. This mountain, on a clear day, could be seen over 200 kilometers out to sea. And any sailor or navigator using the westerly wind belt known as the Roaring Forties and looking for land would have headed straight for it. And this is exactly what the legend of Maui says. Initially, they thought Auraki was just a mirage amongst the clouds, but before they knew it, they'd made landfall at Bruce Bay. And they came, not from the Central Pacific as previously thought, but from the Southern Ocean. So who was Maui and where did he come from? The other story that I know about Maui is that he also came from Egypt. Some insight to these questions came from epigraphic research of Barry Fell when he deciphered some ancient petroglyphs on Pitcairn Island which told of damage done to one of Maui's ships in a storm. He also deciphered petroglyphs found in a cave called Casa Pintada in the San Fernando Valley in Chile. These were written in Libyan script, declaring that Maui claimed 4,000 miles of the Central and South American coastline for Egypt in 231 BC. Fell was perplexed that a Polynesian ancestral figure was claiming land for Egypt, so he conducted further research and found that Maui was a navigator who'd been commissioned to circumnavigate the world by Eratosthenes, head of the Alexandria Library in Egypt under the reign of Ptolemy III. Maui had been given six ships and a crew captained by Rata. It can be deduced from petroglyphs and Polynesian legend that Maui's voyage followed a route that looked something like this. After circumnavigating New Zealand for three months, it is believed Maui traveled north to Tahiti on to Hawaii and across to the Americas. He then sailed south for 4,000 miles along the coastline looking for a passage east. Realizing that their mission to circumnavigate the world had been foiled by the impassable landmass of the Americas, they decided not to return to Egypt to face the music, but instead went back to the islands where they knew they would be welcome. 
At this point, they entered the realms of Polynesian legend. It seems he made quite a name for himself in Tonga, where there's a massive stone archway named after him. It is called Ha'amonga a Maui, the burden of Maui. The Tongans remember him as a navigator of high esteem and still retain a copy of his star chart to this day. Further proof of Maui's expedition came from a cave in Irian Jaya called the Cave of the Navigators where Barry Fell deciphered images that told of Maui's visit. This clearly shows that Maui passed through the islands of eastern Indonesia, reprovisioning his ships in the home of the Indonesian rice paddy rat, also known as Ratus exulans, or Kiore, the Polynesian rat. After leaving the Cave of the Navigators, Maui experienced strong headwinds, so he chose to head south into the westerly wind belt of the Southern Ocean, arriving at Bruce Bay with rats on board. The possibility that it was Maui who brought the Kiori to New Zealand from eastern Indonesia is strengthened by the fact that some of the earliest Kiori bones come from places that Maui visited. Shag River, Palliser Bay, and Hawke's Bay. And there's an interesting thing that's come to light in more recent years, and that's work done by one of the scientists uh, down at Otago University, and it is Matisse Smith. Yeah, and she is an amazing researcher, very talented woman who's unravelling so much of it for us. And, the new science, and this is what she shared a few years ago. When we follow the rat lines, we find there are very ancient rat lines in New Zealand, much older than to the north in the Pacific, much older than those in the Cook Islands or Tonga or Samoa. It looks like those rats went north from here. That. New Zealand was settled before many of those islands. And that turns things on its head. Lisa Matisu smith was not the only person who was surprised by the early arrival of rats in New Zealand. This is what Richard Holdaway had to say. I'm an extinction biologist, and one of the main thrusts of my research is to find out when the first predators in, in, arrived in New Zealand, and one of those was the Pacific rat. The first series of dates showed that the rats had been in the South Island for at least 2,000 years. This is completely contrary to the accepted, accepted dogma, which is that they arrived at the time of settlement, which is now agreed at seven to 800 years ago. And it's completely agreed that they came with people. Any other hypothesis just doesn't work. So whoever brought the rats must have arrived in New Zealand and must have visited both the North and South Islands 2,000 years ago. That date was so early, scientists questioned the carbon dates. Some other form of proof was required. This cave in Hawke's Bay was buried in volcanic ash from the massive Taupo eruption 1,800 years ago. The volcanic tephra flowed over the hillside and into the cave, covering everything inside in a thick layer of ash, a layer scientists can date with confidence. Now that line there was the floor of this cave about 1800 years ago when this uh, material came in across the terrain and, and into the hole and filled it up from there up to here, sort of ponded it in and sealed everything underneath. And therefore we know that the material under here is older than that. There was a bone which had been collected from beneath the ash and I dated that bone and the date was consistent with it having the rat having died before the ash fell. All we are saying is that the rats arrived around about 2,000 years ago in the North and South Island. Rats were here about 2,000 years ago. So we now have scientific confirmation through genetic and geological dating that shows that the rats arrived with people over 2,000 years ago.